Most of my ministry has been devoted to expositional preaching. And by that I mean preaching verse by verse, chapter by chapter, through books of the Bible, analyzing what God has said in much the same way that you might go into the trees to study and observe them. And while I love doing that and think it's absolutely necessary, I also think that we must be able to see the big picture of Scripture. And by that I mean synthesizing all that God has said in a way that would be comparable to getting in an airplane to study and observe the forest. So beginning today and continuing over the next 10 weeks, I'm going to start taking daily, weekday, five-minute flights over and through the trees of God's Word so that we can see the forest that it is. You can call it daily theology. And I'm inviting you to join me. Come fly with me. No charge, no hidden fees, no security checks, no lost luggage, no crowds, no cramped spaces, and we hope no crashes. I want you to see what the Bible teaches about various doctrines or what we could say uh, various subjects or topics. As a GPS of sorts, I'm using a book called 50 Essential Doctrines of the Christian Faith by Greg Allison, who is a theology professor at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. It's going to be my guide serving as our outline. I would encourage you to get it and to read it if you want more than what I'm going to be giving you in these short trips. The first subject that I want you to check out is the doctrine of Scripture. Flights 1 through 7 will be devoted at looking out from our windows to what the Bible says about itself, which is a lot. And we begin with Scripture rather than God or salvation or some other subject because almost everything we know about God and all that we know about these other topics, we learn from the Bible. So what you believe about it is foundational to what you believe about everything else. On today's quick trip, I want you to specifically see the inspiration of Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is inspired by God. Inspired literally means breathed out. So that verse, along with others, teaches us that the Bible, all of it, is the breath or the Word of God. The Bible then doesn't merely contain God's words. It is God's words. And that means that the words that are printed in black are just as much God's words as those that are printed in red. And that what we read about creation and the history of Israel and miracles including the virgin birth and resurrection of Jesus are just as much God's words as you shall not murder. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And this applies to every word from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. God authored or wrote every word in Scripture. You might ask, but I thought Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible and David wrote most of the Psalms and Paul wrote a bunch of New Testament books. You're right, they did. And so did many others. There were about 40 human authors of the 66 books that make up the Bible. But the inspiration of Scripture means that they didn't do it alone, that what they wrote didn't originate with them and that its accuracy wasn't entirely dependent on them. Now, the inspiration of Scripture doesn't mean that God dictated every single word to every single author of every single book of the Bible, that they were merely something like robotic secretaries throughout that whole process. But what it means is that God wrote through them using their personalities and their backgrounds, their experiences, their abilities, their interests, their knowledge, and in some cases, even their research. But he was using them. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 says, Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy or writing of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. 
For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke and wrote from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This passage gives us a wonderful image or picture by which we can really see how the inspiration of Scripture worked. And that picture is of the men who authored the books of the Bible being like a limb or a log in a river while the Holy Spirit's the river. They were moving along and they were going somewhere as they wrote, but the Holy Spirit of God was determining where they ended up and how quickly they got there. And he was the power, the force that got them started moving in the first place and kept them going all along the way. So while we can speak of human authors of the Bible, we know that behind them and above it all, Scripture has divine authorship. As I'm bringing us in for our landing today, I I want you to buckle up with this. The inspiration of Scripture means that the Bible is true or inerrant because God is the truth and without error or even the potential of error in himself. Join me again tomorrow, and we're going to sort of high up places where we're going to see more of that. I hope you enjoyed this maiden voyage. I look forward to our future flights.